Hi, what I have here today on the bench is a Daytronics down converter box. I got this one a while ago and my original plan was to use the enclosure for another project. In fact, this down converter probably costs less than a new aluminum enclosure if I have to buy one. Anyway, I figured we should at least take a look at what this box does and also take a look inside before repurpose it. This down converter is really just an active mixer. Being an active mixer, there will be some conversion gain instead of conversion loss. And because it only has an input and output port besides the uh, power port here, clearly the LO is built in. As you can see from the label, let me zoom in a little bit. And uh, it said this has a input frequency between 3.7 to 4.2 gigahertz with an IF of uh, 70 megahertz. Judging from the frequency range, it was probably intended for using in C-band applications, possibly for satellite communication receivers. By looking at this down converter box though, it uh, doesn't seem like there's any way to adjust or tune the LO or local oscillator's frequency. So I'm guessing that the unit was probably designed for a very specific use and tuning is done at the factory. So we will see what the input frequency cross corresponds to the 70 MHz IF. To test this down converter, we need an input signal somewhere between 3.7 to 4.2 GHz. So for that, I'm using my HP 8671A synthesizer, which is making noise out there. And right now, as you can see, it's set to an output frequency of 3.8 GHz. As we don't know the exact input frequency uh, that is corresponding to the IF of 70 MHz, so that's where I'm going to begin with. And one downside, uh, one downside of that uh, frequency synthesizer I'm using here is that the output is not leveled. So the output is actually quite high at uh, that frequency range. So for that, I'm using actually a uh, two uh, pads here, three dB pads, to take the power down a little bit. So let's actually first see what the uh, output power is from this synthesizer. So. For that, I've hooked this up to my WaveTag 1045, and now the RF power is off. So I'm going to turn on the RF power and uh, take a look uh, on your screen to the upper left corner at what the reading from the WaveTag is. So let me turn it on. And as you can see, it's right around the zero dBm. So that's uh, our reference uh, power output. And uh, later on, when we're using the converter, we can take a look at what the RF pow output power is. So we can calculate what the conversion gain is. Okay, so that's uh, our first reference point. Now I just hook up the input uh, into this uh, down converter from the output of uh, the frequency synthesizer. And now let's take some measurements here. But uh, the first thing I want to find out is uh, what exactly that input uh, frequency needs to be to convert to correspond to that 70 MHz intermediate frequency. Now, of course, the output intermediate frequency can be different, but uh, the cir circuit probably is tuned to 70 MHz, and at that point it has the maximum gain. So. We will take a look at that first, and for that I hooked the output from the IF, uh, sorry, uh, yes, from the IF uh, to my uh, HP 5350B microwave frequency counter. And as you can see up there, and um, now unfortunately I don't have a 75 ohm to 50 ohm converter cable, so I just kind of uh, uh, use this, uh, you know, non-terminated cable, and uh, for the, you know, for 70 hertz, megahertz uh, frequency should be all right, but uh, nevertheless, it's not ideal. Anyway, so let me power up the uh, frequency synthesizer and uh, we will see what the frequency reading is. By the way, the I, now I can feel these two pads are getting a little bit warm. As I mentioned earlier, the output from that uh, RF synthesizer is a little bit high. Anyway, so let's uh, take a look. So now I'm going to uh, set my camera onto the 5350B 
And I'm going to turn on the synthesizer again. Remember, the synthesizer right now is set to 3.8 gigahertz. So as soon as we turn on, we can see, um, oh, it's 143 megahertz. So it's quite a bit off from that uh, 70 megahertz uh, band we were, talk we were uh, looking at earlier. So, and, and the one thing to note is that you can see that the frequency is not all that stable. So probably due to the LO here uh, used on this uh, uh, down converter. So we can take a look at that, of course, in a bit. But uh, let's uh, reduce the input frequency and I'm going to reduce it so that we can see what frequency that 70 megahertz corresponds to. Uh, over turn a little bit. Uh, so okay, so it's roughly 3727 uh, megahertz. So 3.727 gigahertz and roughly corresponds to that uh, uh, 70 megahertz. Of course, I can lower it by, I think, by one megahertz. Yep, so it's a uh, roughly 3727-3726 in that uh, neighborhood. So as you can see here, that's uh, the latest update right out there. Okay, so now we know um, what uh, the input frequency needs to be and uh, now let's uh, hook up a oscilloscope and before i forget i do want to measure the output power from the converter so that we can see what the conversion gain is at uh, input of uh, roughly zero dbm so for that let me hook up a the power meter again and i'm going to uh, power it up and using uh, an adapter to put the output cable into the input of this uh, power head. And, and by the way, the power head has some uh, calibration points. Depends on the input frequency, you need to uh, check the cal factor here to make sure that it's uh, at the correct setting. Otherwise, it's going to affect the accuracy. And for uh, input uh, less than two, uh, three gigahertz, it's roughly um, minus one. So, uh, sorry, minus point one. So that's exactly what we had set up there. So now let's uh, put the output from this cable in and uh, see what we got. So let me power on the, uh, turn the RF output from the synthesizer on first. And you can see we have a uh, output of uh, 6, uh, 6.5 dBm. So which means the conversion gain is roughly uh, 6.5 dB in this uh, configuration with the input of uh, roughly 3.7 gigahertz and uh, at zero dBm. So um, let's uh, now take a look at the output waveform here. And now you can see the output waveform here. It doesn't look quite, uh, it looks a little bit distorted. And thus I suspect that the input power is probably a little bit too high for this converter. And uh, at zero dBm, that's pretty strong signal coming in. but. Uh, if we reduce the input signal, that uh, distortion should go away. Unfortunately, right now I don't have a uh, uh, output that can be used to test this converter here. So we will just have to deal with that uh, distortion. But uh, so far you can see that this converter works as expected. And uh, we can convert a 3.726 gigahertz signal into a uh, 70 megahertz intermediary frequency with no problem. And we also have a roughly a 6.5 dB conversion gain here. So now we see that this converter is working and uh, let's uh, take it uh, apart and see what is inside. Now I have removed all the screws. There are actually quite a few of them. We should be able to remove this bottom cover now. Aha, uh -huh. check this out. It certainly looks very interesting. Let me uh, zoom in a bit so we can see a little bit more detail and we'll go through what uh, each component means in this down converter. The first thing you'll notice is that this board is relatively old. This is evident by these tinned and hand-drawn traces you can see here over the PCBs. 
and also there are some through hole components here and there so these are definitely uh, some of the older ways of PCB design and if I have to guess it's probably from mm, late 70s early 80s uh, even though I don't know for sure because there's no daytime on any of the components here but uh, later on when we uh, flip this board over we should be able to check some other components on the other side and hopefully we can figure out what uh, what's the date and also notice that there's no via stitching anywhere on this board and uh, by the look of uh, this uh, circuit it appears that this is an IQ mixer down converter and how do we know these well you can follow the signal path here so the input is from this end connector and as soon as it enters it follows this structure. One path goes here and the other path uh, goes on the other side. So the structure here you see I believe is a uh, possibly a quadrature uh, Winkinson power divider and uh, now of course I could be totally wrong on this so if somebody has anything definitive and have any definitive information on this please leave a comment below. But from these mirrored branches uh, it definitely looks like this is designed for handling IQ signals. Now the reason IQ mixer down converter is attractive is it does not need a bandpass filter needed by the traditional heterodyne mixer. This makes the mixer easily tunable as otherwise you will need to have a tunable filter which is uh, difficult to implement. Anyway obviously this goes beyond the scope of this video. And for each of these branches, it uh, passes through uh, this structure here. And this is a branch line coupler, and uh, then followed by what appears to be diode mixer after that. And if you look closely towards the center, you'll see that there's a signal poking through from the other side of the board and feed into this point, which uh, then spread into the upper branch and lower branch. Um, for, for both the I and Q channel. So this is the uh, LO signal coming in from the other side. And uh, there are some active components on the other side, so we'll have to flip the board over to see. Uh, in order to do that, we need to first remove all these screws, and um, actually we have to uh, desolder the, these uh, RF connectors here as well. So let me do that, and we'll flip the board over and take a look at the other side. And I just took it out of the case. You can see that uh, uh, here was originally where the power went in, and here is the IF coming out, and here is where the RF goes in. So, uh, by the way, this board I was mentioning earlier that uh, the LO comes in from the other side of the board and uh, feeds into these two mixers through here. Now, you can see that the coupling here is actually capacitive coupling. And uh, the way they implemented this is quite intriguing. In fact, uh, it almost looks like a sculpture here. As you can see that the resistors are standing up here. And uh, looking from this angle, you can see like so. So it uh, is quite interesting how they implemented this. And let's turn it over to the other side. And now the board is flipped over. And you can see this is the active component side. And uh, if you look at the board, wow, the construction is really something. And uh, you can see that uh, these are not just uh, mounted in a 2D plane, but rather uh, it's 3D mounting. And uh, you can see how this uh, uh, stand is penetrating the board here, as uh, we mentioned earlier. And uh, this is uh, quite unique. Um, but if you look around, I don't see anything that has a date code on it. And in fact, I'm just looking at those capacitors. I can't find anything that has any indication of when uh, this unit was made. But it certainly wouldn't be surprise me if it was made in the late 70s or early 80s. So now, of course, uh, this side is to generate the local oscillation and as we saw earlier the local oscillator was not that uh, stable and uh, the frequency does drift a little bit 
and that's probably because of the components used. And if you look at here, we have these high frequency transistors. These, I believe, are good up to about 4 gigahertz, the C, uh, 2SC 644s. So here they are. And if I have to guess what is inside this metal can, if you look at the signal path on the other side, the downconverted signal of the IQ uh, going through this route and uh, this route, they both come into that uh, uh, metal can back here. So this must be combining the IQ signal back to the actual signal going out. So that's pretty much what is inside this IQ uh, down converter. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. If you liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up. Remember to subscribe, share, and I will catch up to you next time.